Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our Hex Bash coverage here. Oh, I can't update that right now. Whatever. All right. And welcome back to our Hex Bash <laughs> coverage right now. We're still working through all the technical details. We'll get those slides slowed down a little bit for the next time we cut to them after this round. At any rate, we have a great feature match for you here in the second round. We're going to be covering um, IceCon versus uh, V. I'm just going to say V for that username. Yes, sure. If I can't pronounce your username, it's getting shortened. Vilenza. And Vilenza. I'm going to say V. Okay. You, can, you can do the full thing. Sounds uh, good. IceCon, uh, not only top eight at our last Cosmic Crown uh, showdown, but but they also top aided um, two of our last three bashes, yeah. I believe. So very, very Consistent. good constructed, constructed hex players. So let's go ahead and dive on in and see what we've got going on here between IceCon and V. Thanks for watching, folks, and let's uh, head on down to the feature match area. All right, and we look to have what it seems to be a Death Cry mirror Perfect. here. I, I'm not surprised to see IceCon playing the Death Cry deck. This is a deck that uh, this is the deck that they top aided the last uh, the last two bashes with, as well as the CCS. Yep. Um, we have a pretty good hand for IceCon on his on their side of the table. IceCon's we have, we have naive good. Lackey, huh? Choosing not to play Lackey on one. Interesting. So we're saving this to potentially make our Runier higher fence larger down yeah, the line? Yeah, seems okay. That's a pretty Immediate, This is why Icecon has top aided these events just, that I, I just have rewarded. Not. So instantly rewarded here. So we have Lord Blightbark, which is just one of the most powerful payoff cards in this Death Cry deck here. So by not playing the Lackey on one and drawing this Lord Blightbark on two, Icecon is now going to get to can trip their naive Lackey yeah. with this Lord Blightbark because it triggers the Well, when you know you're drawing Lord Blightbark, it's much easier just to not, just to pass on <laughs> casting your naive Lackey one. And not only do you have the upside of drawing a Lord Blightbark on turn two there, but you also have the upside of potentially making you ruin your higher fence larger down the line, yeah. right? Yep, definitely. So, Violenza here has a pair of Woken Joker Tars in hand, which are pretty good in the mirror, to be honest with you. And and they tick down relatively quickly in this, uh, which, is, which is decent. And as you can see here, what Woken Trocotar does, it's kind of unique. So it starts at 25 costs, and then other troops, when it's on the battlefield, other troops you control have plus 5, plus 5. And then when a troop enters play under your control, if this is your hand or your deck, it gains cost, it gets the cost minus equal to that card's cost. So it was just reduced here by a pair from the Emperor's Like, so it's down to... 23. 23. Currently. So, so, and remember, you have things like Promiscuous Succubus in the Death Cry deck that not only generate their 3 cost, but eventually generate a 6 cost Carnal Demon. So, especially with something like Naive, our Emperor's Lackey in yes. play that lets you sacrifice troops, you can kind of turbo into, it goes these, very quickly. into these Woken Drokotar. And another important thing to worth note, if you get this Drokotar down to like 5 or 6, the first Drokotar makes the yes. second one free. It's just a so, combo. it looks a little bit awkward that you have both, but it's actually, the second one is just like icing on the cake, Three. right? Yep. Like, when the first one hits, the second one's coming down that same turn as well for big boost of damage. Yep. Alrighty. Icecon draws a little awkward. A tapped resource. Here. I mean, I think a tapped res uh, slow resource is better than a non-slow resource. Yeah. You just kind of want to hit. And, like, you have the naive lackey to play here anyway to guarantee generate value off your blight bark, so it's not the worst. It also could draw a two-cost uh, troop here, which would be or pretty, another one-cost one troop. Another Honestly, one cost. I think you or might... Another one cost, it's possible me. you want to lead on the Naive Lackey before you yeah, play this here, because you could hit another Lackey, right? Definitely. Okay, and we hit a slow resource here, so maybe we see the Necropolis Coins and then sack the Lackey to the Champion Power so could we be. can draw a card and gain three health. Okay, we're choosing to Fate Weave. Also, very, very reasonable. Um, if Isakon hits too many resources, remember the Necropolis Coins is valuable because it can cycle itself yep. back out. Pretty good one here drawn from V. There's a Blight Bush drawn here. So, in their hand, they have a pair of resources here a Grounds Creeper, a Blight Bush. And this is another powerful enabler if you get to it here. So, yeah. lets you trigger your death cries over and over and over again. In addition, just like being a large body with lethal so it can trade profitably in combat. A couple Woken Drokatars and a Promiscuous Succubus still in hand here. Gonna go ahead and play out the Well of Ancients. Gonna get our wild threshold on online. I like this attack here, nice and aggressive. Um, Icecon's probably gonna be able to sacrifice this lackey to something anyways, so you might as well just like offer it. Um, game one withering gaze. Gonna look a little bit a little bit awkward here in the mirror. Yeah. Um, it's probably a card that you wanna save for the mirror until we get a little bit later when they could possibly be closer to casting their culmination in blood.
You see the Necropolis coin get played out here as the fourth resource. Interesting that Isakon, remember, they fate wove last turn, so they chose to take a non resource. A non -resource yes. They don't necessarily want that fifth resource out of their deck right now. See promiscuous succubus come down here, and this is gonna yeah, trigger this is, a good one. this is gonna trigger on the blight bark, which puts the carnal demon trigger on this naive lucky. I wonder if we're gonna see this champion power hit now and not only draw two cards, but also create that six six that's gonna take yeah, this Woken Jokatar way down. It's gonna be a good one here. Okay, okay, just choosing to pass back here. I don't hate this either. The naive lackey here can chump block this emperor's lackey for the turn and gain you a little bit of life and still getting you those effects. And then next turn, for instance, you could sacrifice the root here and go fairly wide, which is great with the Woken Jokatar. Yeah. v Lenza goes ahead and plays out a fourth resource and then drops the blight bush onto the table here. This game's going to be over in a large explosion one way or another yeah. very soon with these Jokatars in both players' hand. Yeah, Icecon has quite a bit of choices here. Could see the Withering Gaze trying to set up, cut through Hero Fall. Yeah. Yep. And again, minor minor bug on on the replay here. We've got uh, two two Drokachars, a Ground Creeper, and uh, what was the last card in there? I I have. I don't. Uh, I think it's an Emperor's Lackey. Is no, the, the Emperor's other Lackey. Card. Sure. Yep. I tried to write them all. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, it looks like there's a four four over here. So right. withering gaze does does brick off there. Probably going to see a rainier hierophant come down for for Isakon. Choose to attack first, sure. I like it. Offer offer this trade. I like it. So see a rainier hierophant come out here and trigger this Lord Blight Bark, which will allow allow Isakon to go very wide. The rainier hierophant generates two troops on its death cry, which is also a deploy effect thanks to Lord Blight Bark. Notably wonder, brings that Drokatar down from a 19 down to a 13. Also, I w I won't be too surprised if we see. The lackey or the yep, get sacrificed there. And they're going to draw two cards from this because um, the lackey draws you additional card when it dies. Alrighty. Looking pretty good for Icecon's side here. It could swing. It could get kind of swingy though because there are the pair of Woken Jokatars in Violenza's hand. So, so it's going to be kind of interesting here. Remember, even and though you have creeper. even though you have two Woken Jokatars, that's. That's a little aggressive. We sacrificed the Emperor's Lackey, which was our free way to trigger trigger our death cards out here. So yeah. the Ground Creeper is great though because it is going to allow him to target the Blight Bush most likely and kind of go wider for potential blockers here. And it's going to continue to lower the costs on the Woken Drogatars pretty, yep. pretty, pretty nicely. So we're here. targeting the the Succubus, okay. okay, and it's targeting itself. So now next turn, if there is a next turn for V, they're going to get to go ahead and. Um, generate a demon and generate more demons. That being said, I don't think V's going to get a next turn here. Yeah, th this this could spell death here. We're going to see we can see a Runier Hierophant come down here, which is going to go ahead and make the Drokatar and Ice's hand a much, one. much cheaper. Down to a one. Yeah, we have lots lots of stuff going on here from Icecon. So remember this Rainier Hierophant, and then one of these Blight Blossoms and the one of the two two abominations just came into play this turn. So Isakon has one, two, three, four, five, six troops that can attack this turn, and V has four blockers. So this attack actually wouldn't be lethal with his Drokatar. So um, Isakon might want to pump the brakes for a turn, perhaps just pressuring with the with the Carnal Demon in the sky as an eleven eleven, and then set up lethal next turn when you are a little bit wider in play. Yeah, you can see here that we've have for Icecon a wild ice, a blight bush, a one cost Woken Drokatar now. And an Emperor's Lackey. You're going to go ahead and play out that Blight Bush, triggering the Lord Blight Bark. Triggering the Rune Ears, triggering the Woken Drokatar. Every, every just triggers for everyone. It's a giant board state here. It looks like we're in the, yeah, we're in the point of the game where it's attack with everything and let you block however you deem best. Yep. Worth noting that this, this can make a Colonel Demon when it dies, so... The Colonel Demon's a 6-6, six, six, plus the two bonuses from these Droke Tars only makes it a 16, 16. on the crackback, which is going to be a little bit a little bit too few. Um, the power on V side of the table is going to be higher per troop, but Isakon on the back of this Lord Blight Bark has just gone so wide yeah. that I'm not sure I'm not sure that V's going to be able to do a whole lot about it. Goes so V's able to live through a turn here and go to three, but uh, they're losing they're losing their board to do so. 
The Druktars over here in V's hand, they're all the way down to four, four costs, which means they can play them out. But again, Isakon has just gone so wide at this point that I don't think yeah. he's going to be able to catch back up. Yeah, it's very hard without a catch-up card in hand. So a resource play out here, and again, you know, this is a tournament. You're playing for playing for real dollars, thousand dollars cash prize. Yeah. Top four players make make your opponent kill you. Absolutely. So we drew a Runier Hierophant for the turn here. See a sacrifice, get another Carnal Demon. Yeah. So unfortunately, this Carnal Demon is going to be a little bit too slow because this Carnal Demon can't attack here. Um, he's not going to be able to push through lethal even with these Joker guitars. If this Carnal Demon had speed somehow, we could push through lethal, but I'm just going to go ahead and see V pack it up and pack it in there yeah. as we move on to a second game here in the uh, in the Death Cry Amir match between Isochron and V. Let's go ahead and see here what's going on in the second uh, second game of this as we head back on down. All right. Opening hands here. We have V on and, and nice. so the same champion. So worth noting here, Isocon is now at the top here again. <laughs> yeah, minor minor thing with the yeah. uh, with the replay functionality. And this time, V has the Lord Blood Bark. You want to be on the bottom of the screen? Is that if you're on the yeah, bottom? Yeah, I think you that's have the Lord probably Blood Bark it. Yeah. That being said, there, there's a Lord on Isakon side, and there's a very potent reserve card, Waltz of the Damned. This this is the Mirror Breaker it in the deck. It is very good. If you can live till turn seven, which isn't always possible, we saw Death our uh, Isakon push lethal before that. This card wins the Mirror. You gain control of all the troops in play, and then you sacrifice all of them. So you get your Death Cry triggers and your opponent's Death Cry triggers. Now, if you look. At Icecon's hand here, he's missing something. Do you know what it is? Have you seen what he, it is? He is missing a blood threshold. I I bet they fate weaved. I bet they fate weaved a a blood shard to the top of their deck. Just, yeah. Just if perfect. I was a gambling man. Yeah, just the perfects. Oh oh, look at that. Mm. Got the got the well, turn two blight bark versus the turn two blight bark here. And notably, the Monsagi Lily Pad is turned on by there's an Emperor's Lackey currently in Icecon's hand, alongside of a Hero Fall, another Wild Shard, the Waltz of the Dam we talked about, a Blight Bush, and a Woken Joe Guitar. So, so on V side of the table, we have a couple of choices here. We've got this Promiscuous Succubus, or we could play this Naive Lackey and can trip it, and then potentially play the Emperor's Lackey afterwards. So, a lot of a lot of different directions this could go. I'm gonna go ahead and play the resource efficient, the Promiscuous Succubus. And that's going to trigger from the Lord Blight Bark that's in play. So V is up to three resources. Going to go ahead and put Succubus. Looks like on itself. Yep. Yep. And then we're sacrificing sac right away. the Succubus. Okay, I like this. Be aggressive. Because, remember, Lord Blight Bark is a high-priority kill target. So this not only puts six power into play immediately for V, but it means should Isakon have something like, I don't know, say a Hero, hero Fall in yeah. their hand, uh, and they want a Hero Fall this Blight Bark, it's going to leave V with... 12 points of power in play, which is which is a lot of points of power. It's it also a, allows them to make this attack yeah, here, right? I like so, it. V's generated d value off of their Blight Bark already, but Isakon hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, the, you see V also with the uh, Tekahiro power draws Culmination Blood, which is another one of those Mirror Breakers you're kind of talking about. The race to Culmination of Blood is it's, is pretty real in this matchup. Yep, so Culmination of Blood makes a single champion discard their entire hand. And this card costs 10 to start, and it gets cheaper for every troop and all crypts. And believe it or not, the Death Cry decks want to put troops in their crypts. Very odd. Alrighty, Ice Con with the Blight Bush here, going to make a couple of Blight Blossoms due to the Lord Blight Bark. It's a pretty good start, and you can see also Ice Con now has Culmination of Blood also. W one touch of awkwardness from Icecon's side of the table is the fact that they are missing their second Blood the Threshold here, big here, which enables not only their champion power, but also a lot of the pretty powerful cards that they yes. have in their hand. That's a good one. That's Naive Lackey. It's a prompt draw. Yeah. Not <laughs> bad. <laughs> Naive Lackey onto the battlefield here for Violenza, and it is triggered by the Lord Blightbark, so they drew an extra card here. Which was the commander prompt. This is a pretty good attack here too. I don't I don't mind this at all. I love this pressure from V side of the table. They're recognizing that they are the beatdown and that if Icecon wants to trade with this Lord Blake Bark, they're just gonna have lethal in the air next yeah. turn. And Icecon recognizes that as well and just chooses to jump with their Blight Blossom. I like it. So we're in a, man, it's super awkward here. Another hero fall drawn for Icecon. So Okay, Violenza has this line available. They can sacrifice 
almost all of their board here and get this culmination online should they should they choose to they can sacrifice their entire board and cast this culmination how do, how do you feel about that it's, it's, a tough it's, line. it's pretty apparent that icecon is is tripped up on resources did not to backpedal but did Vemus lethal here actually they could have end of turn sacrificed their blight blossoms to lackey made out of a cardinal demon right i'm i actually i didn't i didn't see that i, I wasn't paying attention yeah so this this lackey's been in play for a turn cycle um and I, I don't think uh, V is in a bad spot by any means. In fact, you can see Isakon yes. cheating there. But V definitely could have had lethal one turn sooner sure. had they been a little bit aggressive. And I don't think there's any one-cost blood cards that punish you making the second Carmel Demon push lethal. Right? Yeah, no. There's, like, Cheap Shot, but that doesn't stop them from Cheap Shot wouldn't stop them. Yeah, not at, not at, uh, not at quick, quick speed. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up the third and final match in this Death Primere match between V and Isakon. All right, you got a nice little game three. So, and again, Icecon is now on the bottom of our table here, which I assume means they're going to have Lord Blake Bark in their opener. Well, well, well. It's got to be on the bottom <laughs> of the table, man. This oh. is an incredible hand the, here. These are good hands on both sides of yeah, the table. Yeah, very nice. Um, V's hand is a little bit slow, but we see last game, Icecon had Waltz, which is a potential mirror breaker, closed coffins. Real Let me good. tell you about a mirror breaker, Matthew. That, that baby's an ace, so... Yeah, I, I really like V's hand here. This is a close coffins alongside with the Hero Fall and the Paw of Yazakan, which is just a lot of cleanup, incidental cleanup here, which is pretty good. Although Icecon has this really ridiculous start. They do. He does have. They do have the mo most aggressive start here. The Lord Blightbark into the Runer Hierophant guaranteed on turn three just goes so wide and put so much power on the table that the turn three close coffins might just be too slow. Might be too slow. You never know here. That being said, V did draw probably their second best card there. It wasn't Lord Blightbark, but they did pick up an Emperor's Lackey, so they are going to have a relevant turn two play of their own. This is shaping up to be a nice one here. We, so Icecon drew a Strangle also here, which is pretty good. Removal is pretty high priority here, so. Okay, he, he draws the their third, third resource. But it's a slow shard. Yes. It's that's a little, little clunktastic there. Hmm. And we see them play it out because they do need to prioritize getting this close coffins into play and then hero falling to start voiding everything. But oh, oh boy, oh, boy, oh boy. Oh, so V's gonna have a decision to make here. Pretty do, good one. Do they want to play the close coffins, which is great if you have time to make it work, but. It doesn't impact the board on there's turn just, three. There's just not a lot of time here. I mean, V is already going down to 16 here, and you can see there, there's 10 power on the board already. So, so it's 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 going to be pretty bad. Pretty it's nine nine, nine power. It's math nine math. power. But so I have the math to grab and verify things like this, that. I mean, this is just going to be this is going to be pretty fast. I don't I don't even with the powerful cards in V's hand. I don't I don't think it's going to it's going to end well for him. Yeah, and you see you see V go into the tank here. Uh, Ooh. Mm. That this is this is not going to end pretty. So Strangle is very good against Runer Hierophant in the mirror. With the abomination, because it gives gives the Runer Hierophant minus four, minus four until end of turn. And because Hex tracks modifiers like that through zones, this Runer Hierophant will still be a negative two, negative two in V's crypt, which means that the abomination that summons is just going to die immediately. It's very very tough. Oh. oh, see, okay, this is another little nuance within. The, the death cry deck that you have to realize is that the removal it's I mean he was just literally just dead to the strangle essentially yep. so so drawing a card's not bad there I, I, I still would much rather be on ice concert oh yeah there's, there's just the second runeer comes down makes two more troops both the runeers get larger yeah and uh, me go ahead and he, they see the writing on the wall and they they pack it up and uh, they pack it in there yeah I think V uh, rightfully diagnosed that they were treading water until they hit they needed they needed resources and they needed uh, waltz of the damned so they were pretty yep and in a pretty, pretty pretty bad spot there so Let's go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and cut to our wonderful slides, which I'm going to slow down a hair for everyone. And stay <laughs> tuned. We'll be back with another feature match here in just a second. Thanks for watching this week, everyone.